guys. Uh, welcome to another week of Wow Weekly with Mist. I hope everyone's having a great week. And uh, for this week, I thought my panda would host this week's video since the hype stuff going on for this past week has been the announcement of them bringing a Mr. Pandaria event uh, to the game, which is what most of this week's news is going to be, but I do have a bunch of other stuff as well. So with that said, let's get into the news. So this week, for our weekly events, it's pretty simple. Yeah, it's pretty mellow week. So it'll be the PvP Brawl, South Shore versus Terran Mill, and then World Quests is the weekly. So very easy week, uh, which is good because that will um, give me some time to do some stuff that I'll tell you about in the goals section <laughs> when we get there. So let's start with the Mista Pandaria Remix. So this is a new event that's going to show up with the next patch. Uh, you'll hop in, you'll get this alert on screen that kind of introduces you to the uh, remix of Mista Pandaria. And basically when you log in, you're going to be like level 10. And your adventure here is to level all the way to 70. Uh, the leveling seems normal. And yeah, it seemed kind of average to me uh, when I was in there. Uh, but there are things that you can acquire while you're leveling that will help your leveling experience. Uh, one of them is your cloak that you will encounter. So I'll skip to that quickly here in the footage. So this is the cloak that you can get. And uh, when you mouse over the stats you can see that the leveling experience is one of many things that's on the cloak. There's a lot of stuff to get. We're going to go over that all in a bit. I just want to give you a quick little summary of really what the event is first. Uh, but there is a ton of goodies to collect. So there'll be a bunch of quests you can go after, treasure chests, creatures, bosses, all that. You'll be able to um, customize your items. There is an item upgrade vendor out there. And that one goes up to 36, I believe it was. I'll also throw that up on screen and whatever that picture Shows will confirm that number, but I, I think it was 36. Bronze is going to be your main currency that you'll be looting out there, and you use it for everything. There will be mounts, toys. Uh, from what I saw, the pets seem to be achievement-based, uh, but definitely mounts, toys, transmogs, and then, of course, if you choose to upgrade your item level you're using bronze for that as well i feel like i don't really need to say this but yeah it transfers over to retail obviously who would ever do this if it didn't right so yes it does transfer over uh because the thing to keep in mind is while while it's on retail this event will kind of work kind of similar to how plunderstorm is where it's it's there, but it's not like you can use your regular characters in that mode, but it is there, and yeah. So it's it's separate, but not separate. <laughs> if you get my gist. <laughs> uh, for those that haven't purchased Dragonflight, you do not need Dragonflight to access this, but you will need a sub. So you will need to have some game time on your account. For trial accounts, you will be able to experience this as a trial account, but without that sub, you're only gonna be able to level to 20, and yeah, you, you just won't get very far on a trial account. And here is a little guideline for your accelerated leveling and content areas. 
As far as the cloak I was uh, referring to a, a little bit ago, that cloak is item level 346. It is going to be soul bound. And then the stats that will be on it, I'll put on screen here. You can see that there's stats for everything. And then 324 is like your max for the experience gain. It does start at zero, so you're not going to have an experience gain right off the bat. You do need to level that cloak up to get these stats. There is also a ton of achievements. I'll, I'll throw a little clip. I was going through it for another video that I've got in the works for you guys. And uh, yeah, there is so many achievements. This event will definitely keep you busy. Also, there's something called a new Bronze Age. And basically what it is, is it's um, a system where there's no such thing as a bad drop. So basically, if any drop you get can be converted into the Bronze Currency... So you'll be able to use that currency to get whatever you want. Also worth noting that they are not allowing access to the auction house for this mode. And I'd say that's a good thing. They clearly don't want people to like be gold making. I don't know if it would even matter, right? Because the, the collection transfers over, but I'm pretty sure the money on your character probably isn't going to transfer over to your re retail characters later. So, yeah, but nonetheless, you can't use the auction house. So on screen here, I figure we'll do toys first for showing you all the stuff because it's kind of the easier one. <laughs> and my apologies, it is super quiet out in Mr. Pandaria. So, yeah, my apologies for the lack of game sound. Game sound is actually on. <laughs> but it is so unbelievably quiet out here. I forgot. I tend to forget about the areas that are really kind of silent in World of Warcraft. And this is definitely one of them. Okay, so here is the list of toys that will be on the vendor. And, uh, yeah, you may recognize a couple of the names in there. Um, yeah, I do believe they are exactly the toy you're thinking of, like the Odd Polished Stone and Eternal Kiln. Unless they weren't toys to begin with. Maybe they were just items originally. But I definitely, I definitely was using that Eternal Kiln. I, I kind of like that the toys are on there, and I will I will tell you why. Here, I'll, I'll even show you. Although, this is... Yeah, the unfortunate part is now that I'm on the panda, you don't see my, my achievements the way you should see them. Uh, so, the achievement I'm going to show you is probably going to look like there's absolutely zero progression on it. It's because I'm on an alt right now. Oh, okay. It must be account uh, account bound, the achievement. I think I remember that. I think I remember them adding that, that function in one of the expansions. That's right. So this is a huge achievement I've been going after. Now, spoiler alert, because this is something that I'm going to discuss when we're talking on the mounts, but... Hulan right there, that Reigns of the Thundering Onyx Cloud Serpent, you're going to be able to buy that sucker in, in this mode. Um, they are allowing a bunch of panda mounts to be bought with the bronze currency, and I will go over those for you guys. Uh, but because you can buy the toys as well, you can pretty much knock out your achievements. So if you're go if you've been going after this, like let me look. Giant purse of timeless coin. Um I don't actually see it on the list, so I'll still have to farm that. Overgrown lily pad. No, that's still on the list. Heart hardened shell. I think all the all the ones I have are like on the list, man. Uh warning sign. I can buy 
Warning sign is on the vendor, so I could buy that one. This has been an achievement I've been meaning to drag back, but I get so sidetracked among all the many things I do in WoW and then the fact that I play other games now. Uh, yeah, between those two things, I get too sidetracked. So, looked at the list, it appears that the only thing I could buy is the warning sign. Yeah, so you can't buy everything for this, but there are a good chunk of items in here that you can purchase on the vendor if you want. And, uh, yeah, it's just unfortunate that I have most of those. Because uh, I have done quite a bit of farming here. So, uh, so yeah. But nonetheless, um, you know, I always thought Hulan was going to be my final thing that I would need for that. Turns out that is not going to be the case. Because I'm going to tell you right now, like, Hulan is my number one focus. Uh, the minute I I realized that was on there... Uh, he became my number one focus because uh, because I kind of stopped farming that mount um, because of the breathe and die mechanic he's had for years. I, I just don't want to waste a couple of hours and then maybe <laughs> I'm just not paying attention for that one little, little second and, you know, he's dead, right? Or even I am paying attention, but, you know, someone just has a faster ability than I do, right? So, uh, so yeah, that's that's why I kind of stopped farming it. So, anyway, sidetracked a bit there. We'll, we'll leave more of that for later because uh, we're just talking toys right now. So, yeah, this is the toy list. So, if you need any of those toys, then you can use the currency uh, for that as well. Keep in mind that this isn't an event solely to buy old stuff. There's a lot of new stuff and the currency isn't super, super fast right now. The The event isn't going on for long enough to be able to get everything. But keep in mind that being able to get everything means like a, a shit ton of transmogs. So if you don't care about transmogs, you, like, you could get all the mounts, you could get all the toys. Um, all, you know, the pets are mainly achievement. You know, you could get all that stuff, but transmogs is where you're going to start struggling. I'll pop up on screen right now the transmog window so you can have an idea of what's going on for transmogs. There is a lot there's a few vendors for transmogs because of the raids, right? Because you can also go into LFR, uh, Heroic, and Mythic for raids. So, um, so there's, you know, transmogs over there as well. So another thing is that there'll be four other toys that aren't on the vendor... And they have to do with your panda cloak, which I do have. I uh, I guess that would have been a reason to be on my druid to show off that cloak. Uh, but I, I did the cloak on multiple characters back in the day. First, first things first, you're not going to be able to get that. They've confirmed that. So if you were hoping to go in and get the cloak or you were hoping to do the challenge modes for those mounts... Those are two things that will not be doable in this mode. The cloaks are going to turn into toys. So basically what you will do here is your cloak of infinite potential, which you get right away. You'll get it at level 10 when you come into, the, uh, into this mode. So you'll need to fully upgrade this. And that will be the Infinite Power 12. There's a bunch of achievements called Infinite Power. So you'll just be upping it to that. And doing that will unlock the four toys. And then you'll be able to, uh, you know, you'll, you'll just get them. Okay. So we're just going to swap screens here. And we will go over the mounts. So this is the Reigns of the Astral Emperor Serpent. So it basically looks like Elegon, except golden. Then we have a bunch of crane mounts. So this is the 
Reigns of the Gilded Riding Crane. Jungle Riding Crane. Luxurious Riding Crane. Pale Riding Crane. I do like the saddles that are on them. Uh, looking at them, they just, they look comfy, right? Yeah. The Rosa Riding Crane. The Silver Riding Crane. This is the Tropical Riding Crane, and this is the last one. I know there's a lot, a lot of skins for the crane mount. So this is the Golden Discus. You may remember that we got our first flying saucer um, back in Panda. So, so, yeah. So very nice. I like that one, actually. And then the Mogu Haze Blazer. And then the Sky Surfer. This is my favorite one out of the three. I've always favored silver, though. I'm not a gold person, and I'm not really a bronze person. Um, I am 100% I am a silver person, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't buy any gold jewelry, but I will buy silver jewelry. <laughs> I think the closest to like gold I ever got was a white gold because it kind of looks silver. Yeah. So we got the red riding hood goat. Well, I think it's just called red riding goat, but yeah. <laughs> I do like the decoration on them. Yeah, got a little bucket in there. Here's the snowy riding goat. Cobalt a juggernaut. This guy probably looks a little familiar. I remember farming the original for quite a while. I do like the colors on this guy. Bell Iron Juggernaut. You know, he he kind of looks goldish, but I'm just going to say it it kind of goes well. The green with, uh, well, to be fair, it just looks like a different shade of green, but it does kind of look goldish, you know. But yeah, this is actually not bad of a color. Yeah, I actually don't mind this one. Feathered windstring mount. I've never been a fan of the kite mounts. I always... I, I've dissed the kite mounts since day one, so yeah. But, yeah, teach their own. Maybe someone out there likes kite mounts. This is the Pale Hide Mushan mount. Definitely a galleon, um, you know, reminder. Not not reminder, but, you know, a galleon theme, okay? I don't know what word's trying to come to my mind. That one looks really nice. River Walker. Mushan. I like this one. Yeah, I like the blue and the red. Yeah, he looks pretty badass. This is the August Phoenix. Now this is this is kind of why people thought maybe the challenge modes, but once again, I'm just going to confirm right now Blizzard said straight out that that's not going to be available, but I do like this guy. Yeah, I think he looks better than the challenge mode ones. 
yeah, he's uh, he's very colorful, you know, the white, the red. Yeah, the, this guy looks beautiful. The Amber Teradac. Bloody Sky Screamer. The Jade Teradac. This is the Night Terror Wing. And I, I like this guy. I like his colors. The Guardian Quillen. Marble Quillen. The Purple Shadow Pawn Riding Tiger. This guy's beautiful. I uh, I love him. I think he's awesome. Black Riding Yak. This is the Kaffa Yak. The Modest Expedition Yak. The Dashing Wind Steed. The Daystorm Wind Steed. And then we have the Forest Wind Steed. So just to point out a couple of details for a couple of the mounts that I showed, uh, Reigns of the August Phoenix, that one will be through an achievement and that's time trial. So that's just to get level 20 with your time runner. So pretty easy. And then the Astral Emperor Serpent, which is the gold one, that requires the Veil of Eternal Blossoms achievement, which is a few different achievements. So you'll need to complete. You'll need to complete the uh, Mogashan Palace, Scarlet Hall, Scarlet Monastery, Scalamonts, and LFR Terrace of Endless Spring, and then you'll need Exalted with the Golden Lotus, Exalted with August Cel Celestials, and. You'll need to kill at least three rare enemies. Once again, this is the Mista Pandaria mode. So if you're like many of us who have those achievements, you have to redo them because it'll be in a different mode that isn't, you know, isn't tied to the regular Mista Pandaria. So you will need to like redo the rep on this specific time runner character that you would be using. Now, let's highlight mounts that exist in the game that you can farm that you will be able to purchase. Uh, this actually has had people kind of in a stir. Um, I actually didn't even care about this one. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess because it's so old, right? It's Mr. Pandaria. That's, that's like over 10 years ago, you know, I, I think it really is when it's, you know, like last expansion or something that I'm kind of a little upset about it. But, uh, but yeah, when it's like 10 plus years, I, I don't think I really care at that point. Yeah. But this is the list. So if any of these are your current mount firms, you could purchase them. However, I'm just going to give you my personal advice here. There is a lot of stuff on this vendor. Um, if you are okay with farming whatever one of these mounts, I would just keep farming them. Keep trying to get it the natural way because that's a good chunk of currency right there. And... There's a lot of new stuff in this event, right? So, yeah, 
I, the only reason I'm going to buy Hulan off of, or Hulan's mount off of here is because I refuse to farm that guy, right? And uh, the rest I have, so, you know, I, I don't have to buy it. You know, luckily I am a pretty consistent mount farmer and have been for years. So, so yeah. Um, but I just wanted to add that extra note in that while it is cool that you can buy it, I would still try to farm it because that's that's currency you could use to a new mount if you just looted it, right? Or if you were okay with passing on it because it's not really FOMO, right? That's one thing to remember here is that these are mounts you can purchase or you can farm in retail right now. Uh, whereas the others, when the event ends, those mounts are gone until it comes back or whatever, right? So, yeah. So just thought I'd add that. However, if you are like me and need Hulan's mount, I would totally buy that one because Hulan is a bitch because of his breathe and die, you know, thing right now, because they never, you, you know how, like, when you kill Undoster or, like, Shaw or any of those, there there's, like, a barrier on him that allows people to get, oh, my panda just sat down, that's okay, we'll, we'll, we'll stand her up in a sec, but there's a barrier on them that allows everyone to get a hit on before he's just, like, one shot dead, well, Hulan doesn't have that. That's why he's a bitch to farm nowadays. And um, and then he also has, like, that two-hour timer. Well, sometimes it's 45 minutes, but it's, like, 45 to two hours. It's kind of, like, your, your rough estimate. I used to farm him when I would work on that bag achievement that I was talking to you guys about earlier. Uh, but it's been a hot minute since I've worked on that bag achievement achievement so i'm just gonna buy him but only because of that reason as far as the others i would never purchase those others just because they uh they are lootable in in retail yeah and i'm kind of glad who lands on the vendor because like I'll, I'll tell you what my plan was uh just i haven't seen seen it in a while but I made the decision probably like three years ago to to stop farming Hulan, right? And my plan was that I was just going to go purchase him off the black market, which would have cost a pretty penny, but that was my plan to, to get Hulan out of the way. Uh, but I just never saw him pop back up on the black market. Every time I looked, he wasn't there. So I haven't seen him in a while. So they're kind of saving me money right now because that was what I was going to do, right? The next time I saw him, I was just going to purchase him. So, yay. The only thing that's kind of weird with this situation is you'll notice thundering rubies like 50,000. That is that is that's got to be an error on their part because ruby is the Alani mount. It it's a BOE. Like you people for years have just farmed the crystals to combine the crystals to make that mount and then they put it on the auction house. It's not worth 50,000. Honestly, out of that entire list, if there was going to be a mount that I would have expected to be 50,000, it would have been Hulan. Just because I'm sure Blizzard knows that he's a bitch to farm, right? And you have to be so fast because of the breathe and die. There's no barrier. And for years, they have just, you know, like the thing to remember is Shaw and Undasta and all those are in the same expansion. So if Hulan didn't get a barrier, meanwhile these others did, they were never going to put a barrier on Hulan, right? Like, for whatever reason, they just have never wanted to do that. And it it's the same expansion as these others that have barriers, right? So, yeah, yeah. Anyway, enough blab on that. 
Okay, so next we'll talk some transmogs. So for those that don't know, in Siege of Ogremar, there's the original Corcoran Shaman's Treasure. Worth noting, that's also on the black market. That's how I got it, because I was, like, farming that shit on my shaman for, like, ever. And it would never drop. And then one lucky day, I saw it on the black market and starting bid for that, suckers, like 15,000 gold. I bid 15,000 gold and no one ever outbid me, so I got that that whole ensemble for like 15k which uh which was a really good deal and it meant that i didn't have to uh farm that place anymore because i had ironically had the mount so it was like i was going in there literally just for this ensemble so uh so yeah anyway there are some recolors to that one uh so here is the silver one bronze and iron. Just thought I'd add that the iron looks very much like the original. Here, I'll put them side by side. Uh, I'll place the original over my panda. So, yeah. They, there is a slight, slight difference, but you would have to be a absolute huge fan of the original to even notice the difference. Especially since in-game, you're seeing it not super up close like we're looking at it right now. So next we have the Sun Pearl Transmog. There's three versions. So this one here, a blue one, and then a red. And then there's uh, these. I'll just keep going. <laughs> I love the belt that is on these. And then there's some unused models for weapons that are going to be obtainable in this mode. So here we have the Wall Watcher, Yongle, Jinyu. I've always really liked those ones. Imperial, Pandaren. These are daggers, by the way. <laughs> um, Fist weapon for Pandaren. And um, Sorok Mace. Hosen Mace. Mogu Lord Shield and the Ironwood Shield. Eternal Empire Staff, as well as the Fear Speakers Staff. Jinyu, Pandaren, and then there's a sword, the Tian Monastery, and a Jinyu sword. I really, I've always really liked the, the waviness of that one. Yeah. There's also these two here. So this is like the Shadow Pen lookalike ensemble. So we got a gold one and a silver one. Here's some extra stuff. I'll throw it up in bigger format here. So we have some weapons. I love this suit. That's very cool. A little dartboard. <laughs> I would totally rock that. That's so cute. I won't fry you, buddy. The frying pan is just for decoration.
I love this. This is so cool. I just, I love it because it has so much detail. And when I look at it, it, it looks soft, you know, like it looks like it just looks real, you know? It just looks really good. Yeah, I'm I'm very much a huge fan of this right here. Yeah. A little extra here. Here is the achievement list. Pretty much a good majority of what I just showed off falls into the achievements. Uh, Cherry Blossom Trail is a toy that you get from doing all these. Uh, and then the backpack, which we just saw with the frying pan and all that, that is to do these achievements. And then the keg is these ones. And then the hat. Uh, oh, and a cloak. It says cloak and head. So oh, more campaign and other achievements. It will be nice to see scenarios again uh, at current. You know, you can still do the panda scenarios in retail. You can go solo them. But it just was a different feeling when it was current and, you know, and you just grabbed a few few friends, well, a couple of friends, and just went in, right? Yeah. Uh, the the gold mount, I, I've already told you what is required, but here's a little mouse over so you can, you know, see exactly. And then uh, here's a pet. So that's Town Long Steps for the pet and requires a bunch of stuff. And Shock Corrupted Illusion, um, yeah, I was going to say, you know, clearly there's no link, but does there need to be? It's just an illusion, not a big deal. Uh, class Ensemble would be nice. Um, I did see the Class Ensemble vendor. Uh, I'll throw up a little clip right now. Uh, but yeah, there was the Class Ensemble vendor. Oh, Operation Shield Wall. Uh, Class Arsenal. That'll be done in Isle of Thunder. Uh, time Running Beacon. And that requires... It looks like a lot, but it's just kill stuff. So, yeah, it's really not that big of a deal. So, yeah, those are some achievements. Okay, so that pretty much covers the Mista Pandaria event. Okay, so moving on to some more news because while while that's the big amount, there's actually quite a bit more. <laughs> so, so my apologies in advance because this video is definitely going to be longer than our normal. Um, but you you guys know how I roll these news videos. Uh, they're done when they're done. <laughs> When I'm done reporting the news, the video is over. Like, that. that's how it works. <laughs> On average, we try to be, you know, between 20 to 30 minutes. But sometimes it don't work that way. Okay, so next up, we have Murloc costumes. So there is going to be a Murloc backpack and a Murloc onesie that will be in the store. So here's the backpack. So we got a purple one, and then we also have the green one. The green is traditional. For those that don't know, you can actually own, like, a legit, real Murloc green costume. Uh, they, um, they sell them on the store. They're very popular around BlizzCon. A lot of people have them. And, uh, yeah, I do believe they're a little on the pricey side, like $100 US or something, but, uh, but they're cute and they're, they're full, they're a full on costume, right? They're, they're like pajamas, basically. 
Another thing that we discovered this past week is that the Void Elf starting area, which is the Telegrus Rift, has some new updates. Uh, so there's new, new uh, NPCs. The buildings look different. Uh, there's some new teleports around the zone. So very cool. Not like my Void Elf really goes home too much. But it does imply that there may be some new stuff happening there. But it is easy to forget that that place exists. I remember when I did my Void Elf Heritage set. Um, because I casually did it. And it, it, it was a hot minute from the time that I created the Void Elf to the time that I actually hit the 50 and got the Heritage set. Because there's, you know, there's always so many other things to do in WoW. So by the time I had hit level 50 with my Void Elf, I had totally forgotten where home was. <laughs> and I had no idea how to turn in my heritage set. I legit had to Google it. And and when I read that it was, you know, that portal, I was like, oh, fuck, I should have remembered that. Yeah, so, so very easy to forget that that place even exists. Oh, Stable Master. Okay. I'd like to stable my pet. Oh yeah, that looks beautiful. Yeah, that looks very nice. Okay, so this is what the Hunter stable UI looks like now. You can even change your your name, your pet's name in here. Very nice. Definitely makes me want to play my hunter more, which is hilarious because how often would you be at the UI? Uh, but it is very nice. You can easily scroll through all your pets. Um, my chickie doesn't have too many. She's uh, she's very much an alt. But um, but yeah, yeah, and it even categorizes. Yo. Man, you can have 205 pets stabled. That's crazy. Yeah, definitely be careful of that release button. That will abandon your pet. So definitely, definitely don't be clicking that. So, so yeah, very nice, very nice. I, I love that you can change them and... I would say uh, Salt and Peppa are my favorites, so we will just... They're the ones I use mainly, so we just favorite them, so they're in the favorites. I, I really do like the uh, the stable. Yeah, not, not to make an almost 10-minute video out of it, but yeah, it's a very, very nice. It looks great. I... Yeah, it just looks very snazzy. I like it. So, so yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna make these guys active again. And Pinky and Cherry are literally just for show. Uh, they look cute, but they they kind of suck for abilities. Void Stalker is the original, <laughs> the pet that came with this character. Yeah, yeah. Can't ever get a rid of that one. I should rename this one though, for sure. So yeah, so that is the new Hunter UI. Um, Hunters, let me know what you think of it. Uh, it's, I gotta imagine you love it. Like, I don't even main a hunter. My hunter is very much an alt. I main druid, and I actually love this UI. It is so amazing. It looks great. Okay, so the trading post had some new items. Um, I wasn't expecting that we would see this so early, because, uh, just, you know, just a, a little fair warning. This isn't 
for the trading post next month. This is for like June, July, August. So I I kind of wasn't expecting to see any any little spoils here so early uh, when there's still <laughs> one month remaining to get to. Okay, so we got this cool mount, little goblin mount, very unique, one of its kind at the moment. And then there's the fish mount. I like the purple one, looks very nice. I like that he's got a weapon behind him. So that's the list of mounts that are coming up in the next, you know, many months. Because everything I'm showing you right now is for June, July, August. So keep that in mind. None of this is for May. Now, this is in the pet section, but, like, th this has got to be a toy. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like a pet. Uh, but I do like it. So we got... Murloc pet, there's a fish pet there, and a different version of, um, well, he was our first pet on the first trading post. This one's Marlock, the other one was Garlock, I think. And then we have this guy here, so there's the water blaster there. And then we have some cool little transmogs. They look adorable. I really like this blue and red one. Yeah, I'm just going to say the guys have the better one. You know, nothing against this. I'm sure some girls will like this. But I totally prefer the guy, the guy transmog. Yeah. Yeah. I may I may have to go make a male character just so I can rock that. <laughs> Not the yellow and green one though. Um the blue and red. Yeah. I guess if anything I have time because this would this looks like it would be from June. Actually it tells us. <laughs> but it definitely looks like it would be a June. So so that gives me like a month or so. Okay, so there is this, which is amazing. What is this? Is this a toy? It's a backpack. No way. And four fifty. That's really good if that stays the price. But yeah, I totally need that. Definitely some Najatar vibes there, right? So anyway, there's some more weapon transmogs here. Okay, so this is where that transmog comes from. Okay. Damn, that looks nice. Ooh, that is a beauty. Okay, so some more serongs. Butterfly wings, which we've had. I just can't remember what the source was. Um, Might have been a store transmog. But they're cute. I did buy, I uh, can't remember which month of the trading post it was, but there is one month where you guys saw me buy the the Storm one. Yeah, it looked just like that, except, except it had lightning coming from it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Just like that, except it was like blue. Ooh, that red one looks nice, though. God, they're going to make me buy another color. Oh, I think that was the exact one. It, except I don't think it had a feather at the top, so that part's a little new. But those colors look like the same colors, more or less. Oh, that purple's so nice. Okay, so yeah, that's the new items for June, July, and August <laughs> for the trading post. Some of them anyway. So next up, a little discussion on the Taven Mount. So at the beginning of the week, people had noticed that the Good Boy Mount had its size reduced. And uh, and that was kind of unfortunate because it was kind of one of those, you know, it, it's unique because of its size, this mount. And so that was a lot of discussion earlier in the week. And then a few days later, after that was noticed, Blizzard came out and said that it was at a temporary thing and that they do plan on fixing it in the next patch. Here's the blue post for a little more confirmation for you guys. And uh, yeah, so so the size will go back to being bigger. With that said, it's very important to read between the lines. This is this is how I'm able to predict so many blizzard things is because I read through the lines and usually I'm right. So the line to focus on here is the we expect to return Taven to a larger size in 1027. What that means is that it could mean that he doesn't go back to his regular big size but he'll be bigger than the small size, right? So he could be an in-between size. Don't expect exactly that same size to return, but, you know, expect a little bigger than he shows up as right now. Also, with Primal Storm... Uh, there was some issues with the, uh, with the Primal Storms. So they said they're looking to accomplish a couple of things. They want to disable the primalist storm location and more thoroughly fix the scheduler so that it can pick two storms at once. We like having two up at a time. I think it's good to have two up at a time as well. Um, to be fair, I thought that's how it always worked. I, I guess I just, you know, I, I haven't been in a rush to really do the storms because I did, well, I did most of it um, at the beginning. Yeah, I'm, I'm only missing like one or something. Yeah, so, um, so I haven't really felt a need to pay attention too much to it. Also, in 1027, there's going to be a new Night Elf quest line. And then here we have a new heritage set for the Dark Spear Troll. So this is the orange tint. And then there's a red tint. And then a weapon. There's also a heritage set for the drain eye. So we have purple, uh, blue. There's also some new hair colors for Kalterin. And I know I was showing off these mounts, but that glider that I really like has like multiple tints. And yeah, this is where we'll see that. So there's the wolf. 
So just showing off some mounts that we've seen, but you might see some new colors in the mix. There's a new pet. Ooh, the red guy looks pretty badass. This is the statue outside of Stormwind. I did uh, I did check it out the other day, and it looks pretty good. Uh, I'll throw up a picture. I, I took a picture of me standing out at it. Okay, guys, so I have two last-minute pieces of news, uh, mainly because I didn't have a chance to edit this video until Monday, around the time that it would normally post. So, so as, as usual, you know, these videos are able to run every week because there's always consistent news every day. Uh, so... Because of that, there's been a couple of extra pieces of news that I can slip into the video. So it has been confirmed that Plunderstorm is going to actually end on the 30th. So they've decided to run a two-time rep buff all the way until then. It will not start up until reset, which is of course tomorrow, but you will have two times the rep, which is really good because in solo mode, they actually already increased it by like 50%. So really, you know, solo is kind of the way to go with that because you'd have that 50% and the extra. I've been kind of doing a bit of both. Uh, when, when I'm basically when I'm not streaming or I don't really have the time to like communicate with people i'll just hit up solo for a couple of quick runs uh but if i'm streaming or feel like interacting with people i'll hit up duos uh, i did try trios once in stream i didn't really care for it usually if i'm usually if i'm like communicating with people it's a one-on-one -on -one. it's not usually a group of people in chat so yeah trios does nothing for me also, you can sign up for the War Within beta. Um, so the beta sign up, I will leave a link in the description so that you can opt in. So all you do is click the link, hit the opt in button. It'll say you are now opted in and you're done and you just wait. Um, Keep in mind, not everyone gets into the beta, so this really is a sign-up. However, I will say, as someone who's participated in alphas and betas over my entire duration of WoW, um, you know, since the early days of, like, 2004 even, uh, they're easier to get in nowadays. Uh, back in the day, it, it really used to be, like, family and friends. Um, nowadays, pretty much anyone can get beta or alpha access. So definitely opt in. You could be easily chosen to try it out if that's something you like to do. I know there's a lot that just like to be surprised. Um, I'm definitely that person. I never liked being part of uh, alpha and beta. I always, I always gave my access to friends and stuff until I started being a content creator, and then, uh, and then I started caring about it because it's, it's content, right? And yeah, as a content creator, you're one of the first to put it out there when it's for something that hasn't launched yet right so it's very smart as a content creator but uh, but definitely personal preference for a player so for those that may forget because it's been a bit uh if you pre-purchase the epic edition then you have guaranteed beta access now Again, reading between the lines is very useful here, so I'm going to just tell you straight out. It's just beta access. If you want to be considered for possibly alpha access, you're going to want to still click this link. While the topic here is beta, it does still apply to alpha. 
and Alpha, I know a lot of people joke about it being like a streamer thing, you know, only streamers get Alpha. The reality is a lot of regular players get Alpha as well, so you could very well be picked for Alpha. I've been in many Alphas myself, and while I am a streamer and YouTuber, Blizzard doesn't recognize me, so it's not like they're handing me Alpha for a specific reason. Like, I'm legit just getting it, right? So, um... So you could as well. So keep that in mind that while you are guaranteed beta access, like for example, I have the Epic Edition. I always buy the priciest one because I'm a collector. I like to get everything. And so I for sure have beta, but I don't know if I have alpha yet, right? So I would still opt in for the possibility of getting in there sooner. Now, this, again, is dependent on whether you even want to do that. Keep in mind that the whole point is for testing. So while you will see some of the content, um, you're going to see the buggiest versions of it. Granted, in a way, we are all beta testers because the game goes live with a lot of those bugs anyway. But... Um, but, you know, this is your way to, you know, maybe you're bored and wow right now and you'd like to just kind of see a couple of things, see what you're going into. Um, so, yeah, just keep that in mind. I just wanted to, I just wanted to, you know, bring that up because I know some people will probably just be sitting back thinking, okay, I, I got guaranteed, you know, just, just remember that that's only beta. That's not alpha and alpha always runs out first, of course, and it's usually there for a while. So beta would still be quite a bit down the road. Okay, guys, so that is all the news for retail. I do have some classic news, though. Like I said, I have a good chunk of news for this week. So yeah, I, I figured they would do something like this to me soon because last week was so like no news pretty much but anyway some classic news uh we'll be going over some kata stuff and also some season of discovery of course so we'll start with kata so for starters the kata classic pre-patch is gonna be on april 30th and the actual launch will be on May 20th. Now, we've all been playing WoW for a while, so I'm pretty sure you know what's coming with Kata. I'll throw up a little picture just in case, I guess. Um, one thing that's been kind of fixed, but I just thought I'd mention it in case you didn't know that they made an update to it, right? But earlier in the week, they had mentioned that Blizzard decided to remove the ability to earn the insane in the membrane in uh, Kata, which was really kind of a weird one because you can still earn that in retail. So it was kind of weird that they would remove that from an, a version that has less expansions, right? That one got a lot of feedback, right? Uh, because that's a long achievement, you know, it's it's a, a lot of work to do, and yeah. So there was an update, it says Blizzard has removed the mention about the insane in the membrane from the original post. This likely means the addition of the same was a mistake, and the achievement will follow the same route as it did in Modern WoW, being available to be obtained, but with different requirements. I think that's what they meant to do as well, because the the one we have uh, in retail is different. Like I'll I'll post I'll post the I'll post the classic one here, and then I'll post the retail one. The I think they just meant to remove some of those reps. Yeah. You know, moral of that story is it will remain. <laughs> but I just wanted to, you know, make mention of it in case some of you guys saw the first post, but not the second. 
Also worth noting, of course, you might be able to know this by the way I worded things here, but this is one of the things that will change when Cata launches. So yeah, it'll go to how you see it in retail. And there will also be some free character transfers for the Wrath of the Lich King. So here is the server list if you decide to take advantage of a free character transfer. Um, of course, they're not available yet, but they will be available soon. And I'll let you know when they are. Okay, so that is the classic Cata news. Uh, a few details for Season of Discovery. So Blizzard had commented on the trading restrictions for new accounts. I'll just leave the blue post on screen. You can feel free to read through it. Um, basically, you know, in short form, it pretty much just says that they need to see that you've at least consumed one month of game time you know, in order to do trading. Also, there's a new drop over on Season of Discovery. It's the Wind Serpent Skull Companion. So it that would be this guy here. And uh, he's over in the Sunken Temple raid. He has a chance to drop from the final boss, which is Avatar of Hakkar. Also, there's the World Core Fragment. And I've... You know, I'm very happy to see this post because for anyone that was watching my uh, my most recent season of Discovery stream, I kept walking past these things wondering what the fuck they were and no one could answer me because, you know, like, let's be real, most of my friends play retail, so... <laughs> So I had no idea what this what this thing was. I even took a picture of myself in it. Here it is. I'll put it on screen. And uh, yeah, and I had no idea what this thing was. So anyway, the answer to my question that I never even bothered Googling, like I literally am just having it answered to me right now because it's part of the news video. <laughs> But anyway, this is a world core fragment and it is it is involved in the rune discoveries for four classes. So basically, and I was seeing it on my druid, so I guess it was useless for me. The four classes are warlock, mage, priest and paladin, uh and these are an extremely low drop rate. And basically what it is, is they, they have like, they share a rune acquisition method with each other, which requires them getting lots of these world core fragments. The fell portals is what I was seeing. I kept, I kept passing by fell silv slivers. Uh, there's fell tier as well. And, um, and those with extra gold and not a lot of extra time will be able to purchase these fragments off the auction house as they are no longer soul bound and their drop rate has been increased substantially. So, so yeah, if you're after that. So anyway, if you're one of those four characters, uh, it's, you know, it's had the drop rate adjusted and, you know, you're, you're good to go, I guess. And if you're curious what, uh, why you would do it, the runes that are involved here is, well, for Warlock, it's the Backdraft rune, which has to do with your Conflagrate ability. And then the Mage, it's the Displacement rune. And then for Priest, it's the Despair rune. And then for Paladin, it's the Purifying Power Room. Also, a change that just happened today as a result of the hotfix is that the Righteous Orbs will no longer be available. And um, this is completely intentional. And they say that the item will become available again in Phase 4. A lot of people are actually kind of pissed about this change 
um, because it really could mean two things. Well, one, you can't farm it. (laughs) And two, the people who have been farming it are going to be able to overprice it. So, yeah, um, kind of an odd change. And I think they're going to go back on this just because it's going to complicate things. Yeah, I think the only the only way they can really make everyone happy at this point is if somehow it's just removed from everyone's inventory because, uh, yeah, I, I see this being a bit of drama in this season of Discovery scene. So we'll see what happens. But yes, for now, um, Righteous Orbs are not dropping anymore until season four. Or phase four, I mean, of season of Discovery. That's it for classic. I've got two more things having to do with just Blizzard in general. So uh, the first thing is that the War Within 20th Anniversary Collector's Edition is going to be on the shop soon. um, This week, actually. So it'll go on sale on April 17th. And uh, that that's pretty much, you know, pretty much all, all we know. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I can tell you. So April 17th, just go to the shop and, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure that you'll know on April 17th was involved because, like, let's be real, I should be doing news daily uh, because it sometimes it sucks like holding all the cool news in until the Wow Weekly day uh, when everyone else is like, you know, the minute the news comes out, it's like out there. Uh, but I I like being you know I like giving you guys something to look forward to on Mondays. So especially when Mondays are like Mondays are horrible, right? There's a reason Garfield didn't like Mondays. So, so yeah, this is this is the only picture I can give you here. This is all we know, but I'm sure there will be, you know, an art book and a bunch of stuff. Yeah. The only problem is scalpers. So if you uh, if you want this anniversary collector's edition, uh, be there, be there with your wallet, even unknowing of what's involved. Just be there with your wallet. On April 17th, ready to purchase the minute they fucking announce it, right? Because uh, scalpers love this shit. (laughs) They really do. And it's the 20th anniversary. Hell yeah. They are going to be right there trying to steal all the goods. So definitely um, be ready for it. The countdown will end on April 17th at 10 a.m. Pacific. So that's the time to be looking out for it being available to purchase. And then the last thing I thought I would mention is that they did announce, uh, for, for anyone that didn't know, NetEase had kind of dropped their contract a while back. And that led to the Chinese servers kind of vanishing, right? They, I'm sure they were still playing, but they certainly weren't playing under Chinese servers. And, uh, and so because of that, a, a lot of those players missed out on basically this whole expansion. And so Net- NetEase has recently announced a renewed partnership so we will see the Chinese player base back. Okay, so that is the news, guys. I am going to do a swap to my druid here to show you the goals and accomplishments section. So for starters, I'll just start off by saying you might remember last week I said we would have a couple of sponsorships. And uh, maybe you... Maybe you kind of put it together that you only saw one sponsorship. Um, I actually turned down the second one. It went against my morals of being a content creator. Uh, it it wasn't like 
horrible, horrible, but it went against my morals. Um, it was a game that was paid to earn, and I'm very much against that. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm an 80s gamer, right? Like, that's when I started gaming was in the 80s. <laughs> so I, I game for fun, and I like to promote gaming for fun. Uh, so... Um, so I had actually turned that one down, uh, which was really a hard decision because it was a paying gig. And let's be real, I'm not getting paid over here. It's it's getting tougher and tougher to provide free content. <laughs> you know, I've been doing it for like eight years now, and it's not easy to provide free content at the pace that I give you guys content. At. so uh so yeah but like i said it went against my morals so i chose not to do that one uh but i did do the other one which was called moon glow bay it was uh a game kind of in the style of minecraft but it's like a farm game pretty much it well it's technically a fishing game but you do fish you cook you you talk to your residents around the bay. Uh, there's quests and uh, friendship levels. And yeah, there's there's actually a lot more to that game than I thought there would be. And um, and I found out it was even a Canadian game. Um, I, I think I remember looking it up to see if like a Canadian crew actually did it. And I believe it was uh, New Zealand or something. Uh, that's where the people are from, but they based it in like the 1980s Canada, um, you know, and it's based in Ontario for the game. So I thought that was kind of cool. That was based in my country. Uh, and um, and yeah, I'm technically way on the other side of Ontario, but, you know, it was based on my country, which I thought was kind of cool since I didn't choose it, right? It was, you know, they they approached me to uh, play it, so, which was cool. So I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And um, yeah, so I just thought I'd mention that in case uh, you guys were wondering where that second sponsorship uh, went. Um, yeah, it was just, it was just a moral thing. I'm not going to mention what game it was because I, um, you know, while I chose not to support it, uh, who knows, maybe they make something down the road that they want me to show to you guys. And I actually do support that, right? Like, maybe there's a game that, you know, isn't against my morals. Um for those that, you know, don't know me well, I'm very much a moral person. I would turn down tons of money if it went against my morals, and I have. Aside from that, it's been a pretty busy week. Okay, so here's the first goal, and sort of accomplished. Uh, I was at 32 last week, I think, so I did like four levels. But we put a good dent into it, and it is legit the goal this week. I know last week I was kind of iffy of whether there was going to be goals just because I had a lot going on. But this week is literally just world quests and WoW, and I'm not doing any sponsored games this week. And yeah, I feel like I got the time. I got the time, and I kind of... I want it done this week because next week is the new patch. So, um, so yeah, 100% the goal this week is Plunderstorm, and there's no reason why I shouldn't get that done. Uh, so, yeah. And yes, yes, Plunderstorm wasn't the goal because my star path was in my Disney game. Uh, which I'm still currently working on at the moment. It's down to the last two days. It's gonna get done though. Um, I've um, I've got all the tasks situated, but I'll let you guys know in the next news video how how that all went. <laughs>
Yeah, because I, I won't have it done in time before I post this one. So now I'm going to log over to my druid to show you some other stuff. So as usual, and I think I even mentioned it last week, I'm like, oh, well, Plunderstorm might not get done, but I'm sure there'll be some random shit that I don't, don't mention that will. Well, yep, that always happens. So that's what we're going to log in to show you. So there's the achievements that I did this week on my druid. I decided I would go out and do a couple of the tour of duties because I haven't actually started the Dragonflight tour of duty stuff. So, uh, so yeah, I went out and did the first couple. I'm gonna gradually work on the other zones. And uh, I, I noticed that Whirling Surge achievement, so I just went and... Oh God, it was actually an amazingly easy achievement. All you do for that achievement is you get on your Dragon Riding Mount, and Whirling Surge is an ability. And when you're in war mode, you literally just, like, fly into someone. Yeah, that's all you do. The the person has to be in war mode themselves, of course. But uh but yeah, you just fly into them using whir whirling surge and boom, done. It was such an easy achievement. Highly recommend. Uh so yeah, I knocked that out with the 1000 honor in Zerlek and Emerald. And and I got my Merrick Centaur rep finally, so yay! That was probably my I would say the Merrick rep was like my most hyped because you know, what war mode's easy, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like not really a big deal. But um, that rep I'd been working on forever. So my rep now is this so i you know it's time to get working on these guys so i i think i'm you know i really need to work on them together a lot of the time i would because i was still working on merrick and i got other things i do i'd have time to do merrick and then low them and then i'd log right uh, so now we can work on Loam and Dream Wardens together and get them done. Luckily, they're lower, right? Like all these are like 25, 30. These ones are 20. So yeah, uh, so that's that's a plus. So that's kind of my next thing. I think that's what I want to do alongside Plunderstorm this week. Maybe just do some rep here and there. Um, but, you know, overall, Plunderstorm's the major goal. I did also go into Season of Discovery, and I leveled, like, five levels that night. So I did it all in one stream, played for, like, eight hours, and, uh, yeah, got a decent amount of levels, and that will be continuing, just, you know, we'll, we'll see when. Uh, but I do want to catch myself up for this phase. And uh, and hopefully get myself in Sunken Temple. And that's really all I want to do. I don't care about anything else. I just want to get to 50, go do Sunken Temple, and then we can break. <laughs> Until the next phase. Okay, guys. So that calls it on this week's news video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you think thought of some of the topics we discussed this week. Uh, let me know what you're currently doing in the game. What is your goal this week? And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.